Well, here we go. I hit record. So if you're in MLO on that, you're probably catching the playback. Uh, you always hear me joke about whether I'm uh, live stream or recorded. And we just decided to do this one recorded. Many of you know Tim Davis. If you don't, uh, certainly glad to have him here. Tim has helped loan officers all over the country for many years. And I just, I've watched what he's done with some of my friends in the last year or two when it comes to building the brand and helping agents be better at marketing. And, and I've really loved it. And I, I reached out to him and said, Hey, could, could you just talk to some of the LOs in MLO net and just share some of the things that I know you've brought into your company culture, but you know, you've been teaching LOs for a long time. So um, just tell everybody who you are and then let's, let's talk about uh, how we can help the LOs win. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, Hey, it's, it's Tim, right. Uh, just a kid from the housing projects. You want to know the truth. Uh, but, uh, but by, by the grace of God, I run the, the coaching program at movement mortgage. So been around this game for a long, long time, uh, originated for a long time. I uh, got my knees skint a ton out there, uh, before I try to figure out some things that would actually work and produce results. And so now we just share it with people, right? Just share what works and, and how it works. And, and, you know, we all come from our own perspective. So there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat. Uh, so I'll share, share from my perspective, what's worked for me and what we've talked to some other people that's worked for them. So there you go. I dig it, man. Well, you, you were doing independent coaching before you, you know, you started working for one particular company, right? You had some of your own products out there and I got to interrupt you real quick, Mike. That look, look who joined us. <laughs> hey, Landry, can you see? What? <laughs> she'll she'll be a part of this here in a second. I I had to, she, you know she'll come up to my office every now and again and say hi. So I, I had, had to interrupt you. Go ahead, buddy. Oh, that's good. I love it, man. I was saying um that you had you had some of your own coaching products and you were helping LOs yeah. before you kind of left the independent world and, and hooked up with a good company. Um, you know, this has always been a passion of yours. Talk a little bit about about how you transitioned from being a, a loan officer to somebody who was giving back to the industry and teaching and coaching and all that kind of stuff. It, it was totally by accident and a hundred percent by accident. I had, um, I think at the end of the day, Michael, you, you we're all, we're all competing, right? You know, and, and you got to answer the question what makes you any different than anybody else. And if the answer becomes price, then you're going to live your life miserable because you're going to win some, you're going to lose some, and it's always going to be this fight. And I was dealing with the same thing. So I hired a coach years ago in my business. Tim, here's the bottom line. The best loan officer does not get the business. The best marketer does. If you want to get more business, you've got to learn the art of marketing. And as you learn the art of marketing, you, you can go teach your real estate agents because marketing principles are universal, whether you sell money or home or toilet, toilet paper, right? So I really started to get into mar especially direct response marketing, meaning that I put out a message that's very tar certain group of people and they, they read the message, they hear the message, and then they respond to the offer. So now all of a sudden I've reversed the table a little bit and I've got people coming to me rather than me door knocking or those type of, or cold calling all day. And that really resonated well with me. And I really thought, man, that, that's who I am. So I, I started to study that. I started to study Dan Kennedy. I started to study uh, copywriting, that type of stuff. So go back a long time ago before social media, right? This is when we had fax machines and landline phones, okay? I had, um, was a member of Loan Toolbox. And they would do these inter success interviews. And you could download the success interviews and they're, their game plan was make a CD of it and give it to real estate agents. So I followed their game plan and realized, Hey, I was giving these things out like cookies and then following up. And some people listened, some people didn't. And that was very frustrating to me. Like the people who did not couldn't understand that. So through study and direct response marketing, I realized I needed ad copy that spoke to the heart of a real estate agent that really enjoyed listening to, marketing and sales and leadership type of informa information and not only listening to it, but implementing it. So Michael, I created this flyer and it said at the top, if you're a real estate agent who, who loves sales, marketing and leadership information and listening to it in your car, please read further. And then I had this complete offer and at the bottom of it, it was a response, you know, put in your name, your phone number, and your email, and fax it to my office, because you gotta under, understand, this is pre-tech, 
okay? Free tech. And um, I hired a young lady from our church, and she would she'd put out 100 or 200 of these flyers a week. It said nothing about our mortgage company whatsoever. There wasn't a mortgage logo on it because that would freak them out. And so we would get in 10 to 15 of those faxes a week. And so Robin was scripted to pull the facts off, call you up, say, hey, Michael, this is Robin from Tim Davis's office. I see you responded to the offer of the free sales training. Tim delivers those in person on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I noticed you're in this area. That's his, uh, where he'll be Thursday. Will you be in your office to receive it directly from him? Because we don't ship it and we don't leave it. We hand deliver it. Uh, and she used to set appointments like crazy for me. And so right off the bat, I was meeting with like-minded people, right? They enjoyed the same thing I did. And so it helped us connect better. And through that connection, we built a relationship and ended up doing referrals. That got over to Lone Toolbox. I went out there. I presented that little program. I gave my flyer to everybody in the audience. I'm like, just do this and it'll work. And one thing I did do from a branding perspective is I took the audios. I think, I think Tim and those guys called them gift of knowledge interviews which isn't a bad name, but it wasn't branded to me. So I created a logo and a title and it was like Tim Davis's success series. Right. And I, you know, we would, we would literally put these labels with a, with a neato stamp label maker on these CDs, put them in, in Amray boxes, like came from like the DVDs mm -hmm. and a little shrink wrap on top of this thing. looked like it came from Walmart because perception <laughs> reality, man. So when we hand delivered it, we had something different than any other loan officer, right? Plus we had the connection with them mentally because they filled out the form. I was seeking that right person. Anyway, long story short, I spoke on stage. People were like, oh, you must be a coach. And I'm like, I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. Um, and then, uh, you know, Toolbox said, hey, you got to coach these people. They're asking you to coach them and stuff. And that's kind of how it happened. I love it, man. That's, you know, I think we, because TJ and I started this group and, and some other programs together, and we probably borrowed your success series idea, because I don't know if you noticed our YouTube channel, we call these success series. That's <laughs> funny. Hey, listen, <laughs> great, great marketers steal all day long, <laughs> exactly. man. If you're going to sit around and think of a good idea, you're going to be sitting there all day long going, well, let me think, I right? And, uh, I know. Well, I remember talking to Brian Stevens about a year ago. And he was trying to get folks more involved with Listing Booster. And I said, Brian, you know, and I said exactly the same thing. I said, start doing success series, start doing hangouts with the loan officers, start talking about, you know, what's working for folks. And, and yeah. you know, yeah, you can incorporate the software in there, but make it more about marketing and how people are using the tools that they have available to win. And, you know, that's how you find success is, is yeah. so cool, man. I will, I, I love that. I didn't know that story. You know, we're kind of getting to know each other better. I know we've met a little bit here and there, but it's a goofy story, but it worked. Right. I, I mean, literally I was sitting in my office thinking, I can't believe this actually works. You know, I mean, I can't believe I'm running this many appointments per week. Yeah. Um, anyway, well, the off. concept of having, you know, something on your calendar every single week uh, w with agents in mind and with, you know, with classes in mind, with uh, offers in mind, I mean, it's, it's a plan. You had a plan your plan revolved around marketing. I dig it, man. So yes, it worked. Awesome. So, so fast forward to today. I mean, you, you spent a few years honing your, your skill and your trade and heck, I mean, you're a national sales trainer for a huge company. I know, you know, the main reason I wanted to get you on today, I've seen you teaching these classes all over the country and I've seen loan officers taking some of um, your, your company training and teaching classes as well. It's that concept of, you know, number one authority, they're putting themselves in front of a, an audience and they are teaching from a position of knowing what they're talking about because they're learning from you. But what they're really focusing on is, is building their brand. And it's, it's more than just the LOs building their brand. It's LOs helping the agents build their brand. And right. how, how does that, how does that all work? And, and why is it so effective for these guys? You know, this goes back to those early days of landline phones and fax machines and basic principles, right? Basic principles of like, I used to sit around and think, why is it that, um, why do we give influence to certain people? That was the question I started with. Mm -hmm. What do they do that causes us to respect them, give us, give our time to them, and then let them, you know, speak into our lives? So speaking to groups was definitely one of those things I came across, right? Tony Robbins does it, you know, pastors at church do it. 
um, you know, major speakers do it. So I started modeling my positioning statement after those guys. So very rarely did I look internally into our industry for marketing ideas. I looked externally, right? How do I position myself like, like a Tony Robbins, right? And so I came up with agent classes, agent class, teaching agent classes. Now here's, here's the interesting thing, Michael. My very first class, I had seats, I had 30 seats in the room, okay? One agent showed up, one. And up, there was a total of three of us there, my assistant who I paid and this one real estate agent. I made her sit in the chair while I spoke from the front of the room. <laughs> it, I, was, I was humiliated. I was embarrassed. But when I left there, I said to myself, the strategy works, but I don't know enough about putting butts in the seats. Uh-huh. Yep. Right? I don't you know. hear that a lot, man. I hear that a lot from a lot of people. I don't know how to get them there, Right. And so um, I started, you know, playing around with these concepts, right? Number one, I'll just, I'll just give you some tips on this stuff. Number one, you got to have a kick butt title for your class. Uh huh. I mean, you know, the title is everything. The name is everything. Um, if you don't have a, a kick butt title for your class, that creates some excitement and energy and enthusiasm. Like, wow, that sounds exciting. That seems like something I want to go to, right? Perhaps related to like helping them earn money or save time or something like that too. And you know, not just like yeah. learn how to read a purchase agreement. <laughs> okay. Who wants to go to that class? <laughs> right. That's listen, I went to college and, and, and literally if the class sounded like it was a lecture, I didn't sign up. Right. Okay. So I think you got to come up with a really good title and I would tell you to trademark your title. We trademark our titles, personal branding mastery, agent marketing Academy, that way, if I catch somebody else that's using it, I'm like, eh, 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 I can't use that. That's trademark. You go get creative and come up with your own title. But the, the key to that, though, is, is that if you've got a great title, right, then people, it builds curiosity. People go, wow, that must be something. The second part of it is you've got you've to promote it like it is sort of the second coming of Christ. You know, um, P.T. Barnum, I love that guy from his promotion ability. You know, he created the circus out of nothing. And if you if you saw his movie, The Greatest Showman, he's sitting there with another guy at the table and he goes, I'm going to put you in show business. And the guy goes, what's that? He goes, I just made it up. <laughs> you know, I just, I love that. Right. And so, um, you know, I created these classes called Agent Marketing Academy. And people are like, wow, what's that? What's that all about? Tell me more, you know? And I'm like, oh man, they're marketing classes on all these great cutting edge marketing strategies on what that you can use as a real estate agent to grow your business. And then, so a great title, great graphics, you know, get yourself a logo for it, trademark your title. Um, then hire somebody to set your classes up for you, right? Tony Robbins doesn't call people and say, Hey, it's Tony. I'm on, I want to come speak at your office. Is that okay? No, he's got a team that does it for him. So I hired Robin at the time right? And I gave her a script and, and I said, call these real estate offices and say, Hey, I'm calling on behalf of Tim Davis from his office. He's the founder and creator of agent marketing Academy. And he's giving free classes to real estate offices right now on whatever marketing topics we were talking about at the time. And his schedule's booking up for the entire year. I didn't want you to miss the opportunity and get you on the calendar before, you know, he gets booked up and then they'd say, well, when's the next opportunity? She always would tell them it was two months from then. Yep. Always. Yep. Cause then they're like, golly, this is I, in demand. I, I, totally, I, I totally get that, Tim. I totally get that. And, and you know, it, it, you read Dan Kennedy. I've, I've gone through some of that and I've, I've paid attention to some of the folks that you talked to as well. And, you know, we've learned the hard way in some cases, like when I do military mortgage boot camp. If I tell somebody I've got an event next month and then I got one in June, they all push it off to June. Mm -hmm. When I used to do first time uh, home buyer events, that's kind of how I got started in my career. I, I actually was doing uh, two a month for a while and I eventually realized well, that was kind of a dumb idea to do two a month because nobody would commit. So then I started doing one every two months and I got way more butts in the seats and converted a whole lot more buyers. So there was a little bit of a scarcity. You know, hey, you guys better, you, you better come out. You know, we're not doing this for another two months. Yeah, so we would create the scarcity. Like my branding events, I am booked all the way through February of next year. Awesome. Right? Can't go out, right? So it creates scarcity. It, it brings people in the room. 
So here's the other thing. This is a, just a little bit of a marketing twist on it. Um, if you if you hire somebody to position yourself like, man, this guy must know or this gal must know what they're doing because they've got somebody booking these events for them, right? That that's I think sets the right tone, mm -hmm. right? And then number two, book up a bunch of them in advance. And that's what we did. So Robin booked up like, I don't know, 10 or 12 of these in advance for me. And I took all those dates and I created this marketing piece. At the time, it was a flyer because we technology, right? Now, we didn't have all that. So we created this flyer. Um, I went and had professional photo shoots done of me speaking. We staged the photo shoots, right? And I brought in a professional photographer. I brought in a fake microphone. Staged it like I was speaking because visuals. Uh, fake microphone. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I had this fake microphone, and I was like looking like I was talking to an audience. And he took all these pictures, and we made this flyer. And then I took a page out of like Def Leppard, man, like their tour T-shirts, like have all their tour dates on it. So my flyer had all my upcoming speaking engagements on it. And it would say like Keller Williams, August 21st, private event. Century 21, August 27th, private event. You know, Caldwell Banker, you know, September 2nd, private event. It was like boom, 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 boom. Like all these events, right? And the picture of me with this fake microphone. And so um, we would, and then we just like blasted the market with it, right? Here's the thing, Michael, so many people are timid about their marketing. They're like, well, I'm just, I don't know. And I don't know. hell no, man. <laughs> people in Barnum didn't come to town and go, you think you want to buy a ticket to come see the bearded lady? No, he came to town like with a microphone screaming it. Mm -hmm. So we took all these flyers and we just spread them out all over town. Like every office had them like boom, 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 boom. Now remember, it didn't have a mortgage company name on it. Um, it just like Tim speaking engagements. Um, and then next thing you know, Robin went from making outbound phone calls to receiving inbound phone calls from the Women's Council of Realtors, the local NAR chapter. You know, all these places were like, hey, we saw Tim's flyer. Can he come speak here? And so within just a matter of, you know, a couple of months, we went from one person in the room to tweaking some of these marketing strategies to fill up our calendar all year long. I love it. And that's how we did it. I love so, it. Now, let me share one more thing to you with, with you real quick. And then, because uh, I think this is important. Most of the time, I wasn't an expert in what I was talking about. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. I was almost going to interrupt you to ask you that. <laughs> I was going to ask you how, how well you knew your content. Because yeah. yeah, better than the audience. Right, exactly. But only this much. Exactly. Just like a, like a page or two ahead of them. Yeah. So I was sitting at a, a coffee meeting with a broker owner. This was several years back. Back, and it was when video was still tr trying to become a thing. You know, this was like back in the Alex Mendozian days of just doing these little small videos and stuff. And and he said, you know, you know, video marketing seems to be coming a, coming a long way or whatever. And it seems like it's something agents should do. And I'm like, absolutely should do it. I teach a class on video marketing. <laughs> I dude, I did. I had never taught one class on video. Never once. I, I did that last year. That exact same thing. <laughs> I just I borrowed a class from Ryan Owens in, in Florida. I'm like, Ryan, you, I, I see you teach a class on this. I need your PowerPoint, bud. Yeah, I just totally said it. And, and he's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. When could you come teach my class? I'm like, my calendar's pretty booked. I can get there in four weeks. And the reason I said that was, hell, I needed four weeks to figure out what I was going to teach him. <laughs> right, exactly. You know? And so I came back and I started Google searching video marketing for real estate agents. And I came up with five tips off of some website. I don't even remember where I got it at. And I kind of uh, took those tips and jazzed them up a little bit and made myself a little five point, you know, uh, PowerPoint. And I went over there and taught it. And, you know, I think that's the thing. People go, oh, man, you know what? I'm not an expert. Well, let me ask you this. Is the news reporter an expert in car accidents? No, they report the car accident, right? Is a news reporter uh, an expert at whatever they're reporting on the news? No. They just report the news. So I put on my reporter hat. I'm like, I don't have to be an expert. I just have to be a reporter of the news. Because my, my main purpose, and this is where people get off track. It's, uh, I, was it Brian Tracy, keep the main thing the main thing? My main thing is two things. Number one, I want exposure to those real estate agents. They better know who I am. And number two, I'm going to ask them for referrals at that event. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm there for. Mm -hmm. I don't, listen, 
they may never pick up a video camera. And that's, it's not my responsibility to force them to pick up a video camera and start using it. All I can do is just deliver the information. And that was a shift for me because in the beginning I thought, man, I teach all this stuff and nobody does anything with it. But that's, that's not what I'm there for. I'm there to build my influence, gain exposure and get referrals. Right. If they take the information and do something with it, that's awesome for them. But I didn't, you know, didn't give birth to them. It's not my responsibility to raise them. They don't have to choose that. Uh, but I can definitely affect the other three things. Right. So you, you know, I think that's what I titled this call. Like you gave them all the tools to help them build their brand and to be better at marketing. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it was actually you building your own brand. Yeah. As the authority, you know, and, and you were out there saying, guys, this is how you do it. This is how I do it. Here's the roadmap. It's here all day long. Mm -hmm. And they still look to you as the person. I mean, heck you parlayed that into, you know, to national influence. And like you said, at one point you were only just one or two pages ahead of the class. But Dude, I did this thing one time and this is where people get all messed up. They overthink stuff all the time. Yeah. And Lone Toolbox had me come out and do one of their major events. I had never spoken on a stage like that before. I spilled water on myself. I stumbled. God only knows what I did. I don't even want to see the video. But here's what I know. Tony Robbins was at that event, right? And he was one of the speakers. On the way, on the flight back, I hatched the idea that I need a flyer with Tony Robbins picture, not me. I'm not famous local yet. A few people know me in Nashville, but not everybody. So I came back and I redesigned my flyer with a big picture of Tony Robbins on it. Cause everybody knows Tony. And it said, at, you know, my picture was small. His was big. It was like, you know, uh, national speaker. Cause at that point I'd spoken on a national stage, national speaker, Tim Davis available to speak for free at your office on building your business. But it was a picture of Tony with me at the bottom. And people were like, dude, you know Tony Robbins? I was like, not really. I, I mean, he spoke that night. I mean, I waved at him. But they're like, <laughs> they're like whoa, we got to have you come talk at our office because you were on the same stage as him. You know? And so, again, I, I, I can't tell you I was the best loan officer. I don't not probably wasn't the best loan officer. There's, there's loan officers a lot better than me, technically. Um, but, man, I'll, I'll mark it. You know, I dig it, man. Like you're, you're my soul animal here. Cause everything you're saying, it just, it goes right through to my heart. Cause I, I think the same way, like I try to be the best loan officer I can, but at the end of the day, if I'm the smartest guy and I'm standing in the corner of the room and I'm telling my other loan officer friends how smart I am, it doesn't matter. I mean, you gotta have a, you gotta have a pipeline. You gotta have influence. You gotta have stuff coming in on a daily basis. And yeah. you know, the folks that you're teaching and the other, you know, the LOs in your programs are building referral networks. They're getting referrals that close at a very high percentage rate versus, you know, versus the cold leads that are, you know, it's okay to have those. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I run programs on that all day long. I have some myself, my team does. But at the end of the day, I know that I want as a loan officer, somebody who's referred to me by a local agent who might know local friends that I know who I can drive by their house and shake their hand and I've got so many things in common with them and friends in common with them. And it, it, you know, it's that local authority that mm -hmm. makes your life a lot easier. You know, yeah. like you're sitting there looking at your phone going, oh, cool, call this client. Oh, cool. Oh, you know a person I know. Oh, your agent said to use me. Oh, okay, you're ready to write your offer. Those are the deals that you want, man. When I branded myself as the, um, the, author the lending authority for the country music industry, um, one of the guys I met was a, a local CPA and uh, he sent me $16 million in one year. Wow. 90% of the time I had a five minute conversation with them uh, because that group of people usually uses business managers and stuff to handle all their affairs. Uh, so I'd have a conversation with them to get their, you know, authorization. And then I'd turn it over to my team and they would work with their business managers and stuff and the files would just flow through. But it, it literally started with a flyer a flyer with the right ad copy that said Tim Davis basically helps or works with singers, songwriters, and musicians in the, in the national music scene to finance homes so they can build studios in their basement. That was my ad copy, but it was what they wanted and why they wanted it. And SunTrust uh, Bank was right there on Music Row. And we were just taking market share from them left and right because we had the right copy and we positioned ourselves in front of them right so again it. it's just you know 
I well, wasn't the best at reading tax returns, but my team could read them. Right. Well, but you were you were good at marketing, and you just said ad copy too. I mean, you you put that ad copy out there, but you weren't looking for uh, the buyers to come to you directly. You were looking for that influencer, that person that could send you, you know, two or three or four deals a month. So that's where you were focusing your ad copy. It wasn't how can I write this ad copy that's going to bring more first time home buyers. It's hey, how can I hook up with these folks that that you know the business managers, like you said. I like it. That's, that's, a, that's what I call first, uh, you know, first, re, my first responder program. Mm -hmm. And basically what it is, is this is like when you, when you determine a niche that you're going to work with, and I think in this noisy world, having, you know, at least one, if not multiple niches is critical. When you determine a niche that you're going to serve, go to the first responders that already serve them. Mm -hmm. So when I were, when I was serving entrepreneurs and people that were self-employed and, and people in the music industry, the influencers were the business managers, the CPAs, and their financial planners. They handled all the transactions for those people. So I met Clyde, and he had a he knew everybody on Music Row. So one year, $16 million, I built one relationship with one influencer, right? I've got a real estate agent who I taught that concept to, and, and she sells in homes. Get this. She sells homes to people who own dogs. <laughs> and her, her first responder list includes – like the dog trainers in town and the boutique dog shops, not pet smart, but the boutique that have loyal clientele where they know each other on a personal level. Mm -hmm. um, and they watch out for her because they know she loves dogs, right? And the animal rescues. So she goes and hangs out with people that she loves to do business with, but she's positioned as, let me find a home for you and your pet, right? Um, so that's just the first responder strategy and it works out great. I love it, man. Yeah, that I recently started a beer lovers group and I've been trying to think how I'm going to put the marketing together there. But, you know, those, those niches and those people that gravitate to a specific need is, I mean, that's, that's where you actually make the better connections all day, every day. All day. Yeah. I, I mean, we're, we're doing something right now with Landry. You saw her, she came up here to say hi, mm -hmm. right? So love her. She's my German shepherd. We make these crazy talking videos for her right now. Mm -hmm. We're huge hockey fans. There's a Facebook group of like 27,000 people that love the Nashville Predators. Mm -hmm. And so Landry goes in there and we do these talking videos before the game and after the game. Mm -hmm. Shout outs to kids and all this other kind of stuff. Like you wouldn't believe the amount of influencers through that team that have come into our life because mm -hmm. of that dog. Oh, yeah. So, but we all have something in common. We love the team. They love the pets. And, and that's how you infiltrate a group, not getting in there and going, I got a really good deal. You should call me, you know? No. So that's, <laughs> that, that's how you do it. At least that's how I've done it. You sounded like Cartwright there. <laughs> call me. Yeah, call it. me, man. I got, I got really low rates. <laughs> DPA all day long. Oh, man. So let's talk a little bit about these classes that you're teaching. And I don't know if I'm going to put you on the spot or not, but I mean, you're, you're teaching the classes for the loan officers. How do you get those loan officers to be part of the, you know, to be recognized as authority if it's you on stage? Because I, I know that's a challenge we sometimes have. Like myself and Jay, we'll go teach a class for another loan officer. And those folks remember us before they remember the loan officer that was, you know, paying us to help them out kind of thing. So how do, yeah. you, how do you deal with that? How do you incorporate the loan officers, you know, in your company and, and on your team when you're out there teaching and get them at, you know, involved with the audience and help them build their authority and brand? Um, it pretty simple. I mean, basically we, we have a, um, we have a close at the end of it that we do um, that we get about 98% of the respondents to say, Yes to a meeting, we get about 70% of the respondents to say that they've got a referral and, and about 60% of the respondents say that they would like a loan officer to teach the follow-up classes. Nice. Right? So it's a complete system. We go in there with the personal branding mastery class, which is more like a big fun field. Dude, we've got them laughing and joking and just, it's all, it's entertainment and education. It's like edutainment. So it's, you know, something they probably would buy a ticket for. To, it's not a lunch and learn, right? And so um, when it's over with, our survey is designed in such a way that um, we pretty much guarantee almost 100% of the room is going to have coffee with you to follow up with their big idea they learned that day. 
and the follow-up is about the big idea, not about business, not about pitching you on movement or whatever. It's about their big idea they learn. Uh, but the, the rest of it is, the big part of it is our agent marketing academy classes. So when they check the box, you know, whether it's me teaching the you know, branding event or one of our other speakers, um, we got a room full of agents. We're like, hey, we have monthly agent marketing academy classes that include Facebook Live and that, that include marketing to millennials. And you can only get that through your local office. Check that box, yes, that you would like one of our local speakers that's also, also one of our loan officers, because I think it's critical that you call them a speaker that raises mm -hmm. influence. I like it. One of our local speakers, it's one of, also one of our loan officers, will schedule time to come in and teach these classes for you on bite-sized nuggets that you can implement right away. And that takes off. And they just fill out the forms and we just pass them out and people follow up. That's how that's we do it. That's a killer transition, man. You, you, I mean, you got the survey at the end. Um, you're getting them to focus on what they're learning and not what the LO can sell to them. And then you're setting up the LO to meet with them and to have future classes. I mean, it's, it's awesome. It's, that's how we do it. I mean, it's just like you come in and you hit them with a high energy, high octane. You know, we model our branding events like after you know, shows that we go, we go watch entertainment shows, whether it's musicians or comedians mm -hmm. or those kind of, and we model our event after that because people would rather be entertained than educated. Mm -hmm. Your audience needs to understand that because if people want to be educated, they would sign up for lectures all day long and they don't, you know, um, yeah, I'll just use this hockey team. Yeah, They'll come to the CE class. This CE class is going to be fantastic. Like, <laughs> listen, that uh, you got people last night at last night's hockey game that paid five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars a seat, mm -hmm. right, to a hockey game. If they'd rather been educated, they could have paid twenty five dollars and bought the Bible or a book or something that would have changed their life, right? So, but they'll spend eight hundred dollars to watch hockey players fight. Mm -hmm. They'd rather be entertained than educated. So if you're going to speak, learn how to be, learn how to do it edutainment. You know, follow comedians, follow entertainers, go to shows, see how they put on elaborate events. That's what our branding event is. It's like, right? And then they'll fill out the form and then they'll follow up. And that's how we do it. I like uh, Brian shares with the, this one with me all the time. Um, his, he's got the three E system entertaining, enriching, or engaging. If it's not one of those three, just throw it out completely. Whether yeah. it's social media posts, videos, or teaching classes, it's gotta be one of those three or, or your audience is not gonna pay attention at all. They're no, they're gone, they're gone. Yeah, that's why Landry's videos do so well. We're constantly dressing up the dog. Mm -hmm. You know, we're dressing her up in all kinds of different outfits. And like one time she was a gangster, right? So she had the gold chain and the money sign. And then yesterday's video, she was, uh, uh, Landry from Twisted Shepherd. So she's saying, you know, people will engage with that stuff. And that's why I'm saying, you know, you got to understand what emotionally moves people. And then people are going to go, well, Tim, I'm just not as good as you. I, I came down. I did that. Right. Dude, I started with one person in the room. Right. In, in order to get better, if people want to be better presenter, then they got to do, they got to present a lot of classes. Uh -huh. If they want to be better at videos, they got to do a lot of videos. It's just no. how it works. One thing I, I've been saying to a lot of the folks that kind of work, work with me and are on my team, and I don't know if you agree or disagree, but I say, guys, if you are not comfortable teaching on stage, how about we at least get you uncomfortable in a comfortable setting? And that comfortable setting is going to be in front of the video camera. So I need you at least practice in front of the video camera and, you know, practice what you're going to say. Well, and yeah, turn that into a post, turn that into a YouTube video but that's just going to be fuel for, for your onstage presence. Anyways, you're just practicing, you're learning your voice. So yeah. if you say you, I don't know how to learn. I don't, I don't know where to go. Do I need to take those classes? No, get your camera out, figure out what you're talking about and just start making videos until it rolls off your tongue, learn your voice. Then eventually you're going to have a nice video. That's part of your marketing. And when you get in front of the yeah. class, you're not going to be so scared anymore because you've already practiced it in a more comfortable setting, but you've at least made yourself get uncomfortable. You made yourself get in front of a stage, even if the stage was only your, your video camera. I agree. I mean, somebody's going to do it, but too, right? Mm -hmm. they can, some, you can put it off till the cows come home. Fine. Put it off till the cows come home. I'm telling you right now, there's somebody out there right now that's, that's getting better every day at doing it. I agree. And they're going to be so far ahead of you. And, and you can't blame, listen, 
I coach a lot of top performers, like, you know, six, seven, eight million dollar a month people. I will tell you two things they never tell, ask me, ever. How many calls do I have to make and how much is it going to cost? <laughs> I have heard those words come out of their mouth. Yeah. Right. And some of them don't like to do videos, but they're doing them now. And what we're seeing is, is that people that are going to do stuff like that are gaining market share because these top performers never blame the market conditions for their lack of success. Mm -hmm. I do that. Um, well, in the other thing that you see a lot of these top performers, they, you never hear them say, Oh, well that was my idea because they all know the best people end up finding the best ideas. It's not like there's one secret idea that just launched somebody into stardom. You know? No, they tell me all the time, like, hey, I stole this idea from this person, but I tweaked it. Right. <laughs> all the time. Exactly. I stole this, I tweaked it. Exactly. I dig it, man. Well, that's, you know, and that's part of why you're comfortable getting on camera here. I mean, you're, you're teaching a group behind the scenes, but heck, you just shared all the stuff. 99% of the folks that are watching are probably not going to implement a whole lot. I hope they do. Hey, the, the, I love the video Tim did. Yep. Those are some good ideas. I'm going to call some weights. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Hey, can I, how, how do I buy Zillow leads? Like, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to buy some leads. Oh, gosh. What we're talking about, let, let, me, let me say this real quick, because what we're talking about is a long-term game plan. Mm -hmm. Look, you know, that first year, I was not, you know, I was just trying to struggle out there. I would talk to groups of three people or 10 people or five people or 30 people or, you know what I'm saying? You just kind of, you're just kind of racking up, racking up, racking up. Um, so you got to be willing to pay the price. I like it, man. Cool. Well, I think that's good. We gave our, our folks maybe half an hour, 35 minutes there of solid, solid tips. Anything else you got to, to leave the folks with? I mean, if they want to, you know, follow up with, with you or your, your company or learn a little bit more about what you guys do. I mean, you don't really have this available for private, you know, uh, sale at this point. I mean, you're, you're entrenched with Moomer, right? Pretty much. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I work directly for them. I run the national coaching platform. We've got seven coaches underneath me. So, you know, my plate's pretty full just kind of managing that platform and that growth. I mean, what, however many, what we do, 13 billion or whatever dollars, right? And I'm like, okay, I got to coach this stuff, right? So, but, um, um, but you know what? I'm on social media. Golly, you know, it, it's not like my Facebook pro profile is private for God's sakes. People swipe my picture all the time for Tinder and crap. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a bad move, by the way, if any of those swipers out, that's not a good move. You should probably find somebody a little more attractive, but, um, you can follow me on social media and hit me up on there. It's easy. You know, it's where you found me. Find me on awesome, Facebook. Man. Well, I appreciate it. Hopefully, I, next time I'm in Nashville, uh, hopefully we get a chance to, to meet up again. And uh, we appreciate your contributions and your time. And I hope everybody that's watching picked up at least a handful. I mean, I know I picked up a lot of things that, that the more I hear them, the more I know I got to do them. And, you know, hopefully it reminds me that in some cases I'm on the right track. So there you go. Hey, good talking to you, buddy. Thanks for having me on today. I appreciate you, man. Likewise, man. Wish you tons of luck. We'll talk soon. Right, you too. I'll see you, buddy.